Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. had a chance to check the weather yet how's the weather going everywhere you know what everybody's got some today the weather <laughs> has has weather, is yeah. distributed now, what's that william gibson quote uh, the future is here it's just not e- equally distributed so yes anyway, since we were dropping names of authors right before yeah. <laughs> got the author name triggers going exactly. hey janet good to see you fellow zoni dropping into the chat uh, today ah does everybody in, in Chandler, Arizona have to say, I'm from Chandler, Arizona. Is that is that how it works? <laughs> I don't think so, but I don't. that's a good one. But that's, a, that's what goes through my brain. I'm sorry, gang. I am sorry. <laughs> um, so, so Kevin's in the south of France, which feels, I, I think that's that feels like like kind of flaunting it maybe you know oh wow yeah we i thought we had a rule like if you were in a really cool place you're not allowed to share your weather <laughs> exactly don't don't tell us <laughs> no that's okay we love to hear from you yes. all no it's very fabulous it is very absolutely cool. it, it always reminds noting, us how global we are joseph is noting that there's no weather on mars and i'm wondering um do you uh, are you speaking from from mars joseph from experience you, right I think if, if if Joseph is here from Mars, then that's probably the furthest away. I, mean, <laughs> I think. Uh, now, now we're well, you know what? not just global. <laughs> I actually grew grew up outside of Mars. Oh, oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah, Mars, Pennsylvania is there we go. actually uh, north of it's where I grew up. Yeah, it's a place. It's a thing, but it's not named after uh, the planet. Oh, apparently. It's apparently well, named after uh, the candy. I was going to say the candy, candy bar. <laughs> right. Uh, Hershey. You would have thought. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Indeed. Well, hey, Chris, who is this random person chatting with us today? Yeah. Well, we already know where he's where, where he grew up. Grew up. Um, but folks, let's let's find out what what Carl Kopp has been doing more recently since since living in Mars. <laughs> Carl, you've been with us a few times um, here here on Idiotic, but go ahead and uh, share your biography with folks. In case I have been, but somehow I keep coming back. So, um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Um, so, yeah, so uh, I'm, uh, my day job, I tell people, is I'm a professor of instructional design and technology at uh, formerly Bloomsburg University. We've merged with some of our sister universities, so now we're Commonwealth University. They spent a lot of time thinking of that name. Um, Pennsylvania apparently is the Commonwealth, um, but we're the Bloomsburg campus. But I, I teach graduate sc- students how to design, deliver, and develop online instruction. And then kind of my other, uh, I have several other hats, but one of them is um, I teach and talk about and create courses on the topic of games and gamification for learning. So I've been studying that for for quite some time and trying to uh, help people understand intelligent use of those tools and uh, uh, how they can be uh, leveraged to make learning a little bit better, a little bit more interactive, a little bit more engaging. Um, I have a a bunch of LinkedIn learning courses if anybody is on LinkedIn learning. most organizations have it for free, so you can check out the LinkedIn learning courses on gamification for free. And I'm working on another LinkedIn learning course, this one on interactive learning. So I'm looking forward to that one. Um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of it. Is that is that good? That's tremendous. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, first of all, do you do you sleep? Because like, how do you, how do you, how do you jam all of that in? in, in, in yeah. Uh, 
I'm feeling like a slacker <laughs> now. Holy, the, the hardest working man in L and D, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, well, I tell people between three and four every morning, I'm wide open. So, <laughs> uh, well, then thanks for bumping that time slot up for us today. So, <laughs> thanks for having me. Now, excited yeah, to be fabulous. here. Fabulous. Um, so yeah. we are talking gamification today, but um, I think we're kind of like looking at things that, well, as the subtitle of the session says, what worked, what didn't, what's next. Um, I mean, we've had the, you know, gamification has been around for, for a bit. It's been the subject of, you know, conference sessions, et cetera, for, I don't know, five, seven years, probably like, it, you know, the level of prom prominence that uh, that kind of a thing. So, you know, we've got some real world experience in that, in that space now. And um, are we, are you thinking, you know, it's time for a, a rethink or are we thinking fine tweaking or, or, well, so, so, so it's interesting. So the one thing that I think that we really need to examine, so a lot of people jumped on gamification and said, oh, um, you know, we need to make it a game. We need to have cute characters. We need to have, you know, pieces moving on a virtual board. We need to have points. We need to have... But that is, uh, to me, a very superficial version of gamification and, and kind of where it started, because what we really need to think about is we need to think about the techniques. So what are the concepts that motivate humans, right? One is progress. So by putting in something like a progress bar, which doesn't look like a game, doesn't feel like a game, but helps motivate people, those are the things that people are going to, you know, when I, when I see people talk about learning uh, experience designers versus instructional designers, which is a whole other conversation, but one of the things, if you're if you're going to, no matter what you are, if you're going to develop for an experience, we should think about these techniques, not not making it more like a game, but integrating the techniques like progress bars, virtual loop, uh, virtual um, yeah, virtual loops, virtuous loops, um, uh, and those kind of elements into what we're doing, right? Sense of accomplishment, overcoming challenge, interleaving, all those kind of things are what I would call advanced gamification and where I think the field really needs to, to move toward. So we need to really think about how we leverage um, smart design principles. And games just happen to use them like first mm. or, or all the time, but they're not exclusive to, to games at all. And that's why I think um, in some ways, gamification kind of missed the boat. Everybody went out and said, oh, yeah, I got gamification. I got points. And well, you know, points, people do not <laughs> play a game for points, right? They're not motivated typically just by points. You're motivated by overcoming a challenge. You're motivated by pushing yourself. You're motivated by um, comparing yourself to others. Like all of those kind of things are how we gain motiva um, motivation and to solely think about you know, points, badges, and leaderboards is not the right way to do it. Now, they can be integrated into a large learning ecosystem and can drive people forward, but shouldn't be the only thing that we rely on in terms of helping people become better learners. It, it, it's really interesting. What we should really focus, I, I, I teach a, a class called Instructional Game Design. I was teaching it last night to graduate students. And, um, I was going over some research that shows that games are better than lectures and discussions and all things for, for learning. And then the real big reveal is they're better because they're active learning. So a game by default is active learning. So active learning really is the key to uh, learning and engagement, not necessarily throwing points or, or, you know, all those kind of things on it. So the really thing that we need to think about is how can we make our learning more active games i think are a default right i mean when you think of a game you think of being active right away it's not like oh okay a lecture you have to think well how do i make my lecture interactive hmm, right but a game you're like oh how do i make my game inter no it's it's a game so uh those are the kind of things i think that we need to to, to think about and need to help people um people get used to that so those are some things that uh, i think we should think about yeah well what sure. uh wait we, um, you kind of touched on a few reasons, and I think people could probably kind of pull out where we went wrong, but what, like, where did we go wrong? Like, why? I mean, I guess you kind of mentioned that. So I go, why well, it didn't work. But I guess what I'm getting at is like, like, 
do you have any case studies or anything like that where people implemented gamification and then it failed miserably and they just didn't know why and they didn't understand or uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, like, like why 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 were we so excited about it and then it and then what did we learn that <laughs> that that made us realize oh maybe we should be looking at this in a different way yeah so um yeah, there's a couple things. So, so one, I, I put a link. Uh, somebody asked about that course. So, there's a link to our program if anybody's interested. Um, uh, I think we went wrong in a couple ways. One is we always do this. We take the easy way out. Oh, games are um, engaging. People like games. Games have pieces in them that are kind of cool. So, let's take the pieces. And I think we took the three easiest possible pieces. Right? We took the the leaderboards. We took the uh, points, uh, we took badges. And the funny thing about leaderboards is that in some cases they're actually demotivating. So I always say the first 11, the first 10 people love the leaderboard. The 11th person is like, eh, I don't know. And the 125th person is like, no, this is totally demotivating for me. So we, we did it the wrong way. Um, and then the other thing that we didn't do is we didn't get below like what does make a game interesting for us. It's really the challenge, right? It's really overcoming obstacles. And research shows that when you overcome an obstacle or a challenge, it gives you more confidence to overcome more obstacles and more challenges. So it's this virtuous cycle that, that I was talking about before. But I've seen organizations, um, the other thing is, is humans, we are so good at, pun intended, gaming the system <laughs> so if you don't really think about your um, ramifications of gamifying, so for example, I went to a conference one time and it was a gamified app and you would get t-shirts or swag or whatever. Now, the weird thing is the last thing in the world I need is another t-shirt. Like I just do not, everywhere I go, I get t-shirts. <laughs> Only second to bags. Like I don't need more bags either. But anyway, it's it's gamified. I'm like a gamified guy. Okay, great. So you get points for taking pictures. So I was taking pictures of my shoes, of the carpet, <laughs> of the, you know, whatever, racking up tons of points, but totally missing what the purpose was, which was to have people and socialization and things like that. So that's an example of where kind of gamification goes wrong. The, the other place where it goes wrong is if you try to um, – if the game, like sometimes I've had experiences where people are doing games that have absolutely nothing to do with and no attempt is made to link it to what you have to do on the job. And so um, people sit there and go like, what am I, like I got 4,000 emails this morning and you're teaching me about how dogs run around a dog park? Like I don't get it. So um, one of the things that we need to do is if we're introducing any kind of these tools is we need to clearly and, and the research says this as well in order to do a game properly or a gamified experience you have to set it up like why are we doing this what to look out for what are some things that you should pay attention then have the experience and then debrief it and i believe with any learning if if you if you don't debrief it if you don't reflect then it's just an experience it's not learning right so we're not going to learn anything unless we reflect on it. So those are some examples of um, where things have gone wrong. And yeah, um, yeah, uh, as, as Cornell says, you know, we also, and I, I recently wrote uh, uh, a LinkedIn um, thing about this, is that we can't have uh, interactivity for the sake of interactivity. Like a lot, of, and some of that um, um, is, is a little bit, you know, when, Word processing first came out. Um, people started making like the worst newsletters ever. Like, oh, I can bold. Okay, cool. Oh, I can use twenty <laughs> different fonts. Awesome. And so they 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 started to do this, and um, it wasn't good. And mm -hmm. so we're kind of like that with some of our tools now. Um, there are some tools out there that allow us to add as much interactivity as we could imagine, and in some ways, that's awesome, but in some ways, that's really not awesome. <laughs> mm. Well, it, <laughs> it, 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 you know the huge the huge yeah. feature set that can let us do anything, but but we have to be um, mindful to select the right tools for for the the thing at, at hand, as opposed to let's use every tool in the toolbox. Basically, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm thinking about a project. One of my early 
project um, here at Domino. We were working with a financial organization. They were, um, and it was a very scenario based project. You were learning to ask open ended questions uh, as part of your client, get to know your client kind of process. And the, the, the project also included um, every now and then you'd be given a trivia question about the banking institution and you could, you could gather up points basically for that. And um, the, I, I was, I, I've, I've described this project here on Idiotic Audit before. I was actually very fortunate to be able to about a year and a half ago, be involved in the revision of that project. So I got to hear, you know, the lessons learned. And the first thing, um, the first thing they said was, okay, the, the trivia games are gone because people are finding that annoying. It's, 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 it's not, you know, part of it. And I thought, yeah, yeah, we should have maybe thought about that, um, you know, at the start, because it, it's a completely non sequitur to the actual task at hand and learning something like um, asking open ended questions like that's a, that's a lot of mental tasks going on. And then to be throwing up a, what year was the XYZ found, you know, what's that got to do with, you know, the thing at hand, right? So, um, right. although I'm embarrassed that we, you know, didn't recognize that initially, but I am appreciative of the fact that I got the, we got the feedback and, uh, and we were able to recognize and say, yeah, that's, that's an interruption. It seems like a fun thing to put in, but it really actually, you know, uh, worked against the learning process. Yeah. It, 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 it the, the trivialization like, so for example, one of the really popular, uh, trivia is really popular. Um, other kinds of games uh, are popular based on maybe Jeopardy. game shows. Yeah, but the, but the issue with that is that's great for declarative knowledge, right? The mm -hmm. basic memorization jargon facts. But what I see is people try to take those, those, those templates and teach like problem solving, which is not, that doesn't work, right? So mm -hmm. if you really want to use problem solving and games can use problem solving, I, I've actually gone to um, a, a process where I, I like to do um, uh, card games for learning. And people say, well, why card games? And I, and I do both um, digital card games and as well as um, physical card games. Like here's a, here's a physical card game that I developed. Uh, and the reason for that is because everybody knows how to play cards. So you don't have this cognitive overload of like, how do I figure out this game? How do I figure out all, all the rules? How do I, when you say shuffle the cards, everybody, oh, shuffle, okay, I get it, deal. Everybody gets deal, right? I don't have to explain what deal means. Like <laughs> if I was doing a lot of games, like you have to explain, okay, well, here's where you get your inventory and then you're gonna apply your inventory to a situation and people go, well, I, I don't get it. I don't play those games. Like I don't, I don't. Well, explain to me this inventory thing, right? And how it works. So cards, you don't have to do that. So it's really a good way to think about um, using uh, very simple ways to teach that are integrated into the system. So for example, you could take cards and you can have a card that has an opening on it and you could challenge the opening or you could change the opening, you know, in a sales situation. So there's a lot of different ways that you can integrate very simple gamification elements into your learning. But the, the, the trick is it has to be relevant and similar to what you're actually doing on the job, right? So if you're not doing that on the job, then answering, you know, if you're not answering historical questions, tr historical trivia questions on the job, <laughs> that shouldn't be in the game, right? <laughs> exactly. Mean, come on. Uh, but if you're asking, you know, open-ended questions, probing questions, then then probe in the game, like do that. So the, mm -hmm. those are some kind of interesting things to to think about. So what what did so we we talked a little bit about what we got wrong. What what did we get right? So and, and maybe I should and maybe we should step back and maybe have a differentiation between um, what we mean by gamification and game based learning. Right. Like we've talked in the past and we've made those differentiations. But as yeah. I as I asked the question in the chat as to who's implemented gamification before, um, you know, we've had some uh, it looks like we've got several folks in there that have done it. Um, others uh, said yes. And then they go on to explain what you and I would, I think, both agree is a game, a, a game based learning it's like a game uh it, which is different than the gamification it part. is yeah so 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 gamification very simply is using parts pieces and elements of games to give um 
uh, to motivate people and to provide feedback to them. So a, a really good example of gamification is, so we created a 3D, 360 tour of uh, animal hospital for a client, right? So at Bloomsburg, we do projects for companies. So we use this 360, and one of the things that we added into it was a map. So you clicked on the map, and it had areas that you could unlock of the hospital, right? The, the, the surgery room, the, the, that stuff. That use of a map with unlocking is a game element. But walking around the clinic and looking at things in 3D is not a game, right? So that's gamification. We use that particular element in it. When you answer a multiple choice question and you earn five points, that's gamification, right? Because... Um, there's no real thing. But when you sit down and you say, okay, we're going to use this strategy game and we're going to strategize how to bring our product to market and you're going to do this and you're going to do this and we start. So games tend to have very specific integrated elements to provide the whole gestalt or the whole experience. And the other thing to think about from a game is you don't learn from a game. Like when we design a game, we're designing the environment in which the learning can occur but we don't actually make the learning happen, right? We're developing kind of that, and we have to do it correctly. In gamification, we're kind of saying, look, here's what you need to do to earn these points. Here's specifically what you need to answer. So it's a very specific targeted element. It's often on the, the uh, continuum. I say, you know, the continuum is, you know, if you have a child and you say, hey, um, I'll give you five points if you go get the mail, right? Uh, that's a form of gamification. Um, uh, although, and then at the other end, you would have a fully immersive, um, like Assassin's Creed did their, um, you can actually tour, uh, ancient Egypt, uh, in the environment that they created in this 3d, you know, uh, triple a game, but you know, in that version, you don't get to run around and, and quietly assassinate people. Um, so it's a learn, it's a learning game as, as, as opposed to like, you know, other kind of games. Um, so lots of different things. So, so, but to me, I always say to people, like whether you call it games or gamification, you know, that's kind of academic. What I really care about is are you actively involving the learner? And that is the, the key. And the other interesting thing is um, there's been some really interesting research about actively involving learners. It finds out that if you're in a classroom and you're in an active learning situation, and I ask you, did you learn more or less than a lecture? You'll say, I learned less. And then if I give you an exam later on, you'll actually score higher. So what happens is people in an active learning environment, so we've all had this also, right? Like if we've, if we've uh, uh, worked with uh, workshops or whatever, you say, okay, everybody, I want you to turn to your partner and you're like, oh my God, come on, seriously? I just kind of wanted to sit and bench. <laughs> I do not want to turn to the person sitting next to me, engage in small talk, and see if we can like do this activity. But once you get into the activity, it really becomes a learning experience, and, and you don't have to like the game or gamified experience to learn from it. And I think one of the mistakes that we made, one of the questions that we were making, is everybody thought, oh, gamification equals fun. If we have fun, people will learn. And I always say, if you really want people to have fun, give them the day off. If you want people to learn, then we need to create a learning game. They might not have fun. In fact, if you think about, um, I always talk about, if you think about people, if you think about your own learning, think about when you had an aha moment and you remember that learning aha moment, chances are it wasn't something that came really easily. Chances are it wasn't even fun. You struggled, you struggled, you struggled, got it. And that is important. Uh, it's called desirable difficulties. And interestingly, things that are too easy to learn are really hard to recall later on. So if we struggle a little bit to learn something, it becomes much better for us to recall that information. And so I think one of the things that we're learning is to uh, add a little bit of struggle, add a little bit of challenge, add a little bit of uncertainty into the situation, and people will then remember and apply it later. They'll be uncomfortable the whole time. They won't like it. You'll get bad level one evaluations, <laughs> like, what is this idiot doing? You know, can't you just lecture to me? But um, 
we know from the research, I mean, there, there's some research that said people in lectures retain, are involved in higher order or problem solving thinking less than 1% of the time. So if you want problem solving and higher order thinking, which I would argue many organizations do not want people to do, um, but if you do have an organization that you want that to happen, lecturing is not the right way, right? What we want, and when I say that is what most organizations want is you to follow procedures that are already developed and don't deviate from those procedures. So here's the memorization of those procedures. Now they'll tell you, we want people to problem solve, but as soon as you problem solve, they'll be like, oh, no, that's against the procedure. You can't do, you, how did you make that? So um, we need to think about you know, where uh, we fit into this kind of thing. But that's really um, where I think gamification is, is I, I hope it's headed, and I hope it's, it's going in, in that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, before we get to the future type stuff, one thing I did want to do, and I hope I'm not throwing you a curveball here, but I want to level it up a little bit and see, because we got, we've, we've talked kind of academically and to instructional designers, and everybody in the chat is obviously really getting it. But um, a lot of times when we're talking to executives, and I know the cool thing about your program is that you work with companies. And so you know what leaders yeah. want and what they're looking for when they say, hey, it'd be really great if your students could come and build us this program to solve X, Y, Z problem or what, however, you know, it occurs. But what should they be looking for or thinking about when the terms like gamification get thrown in? What, what do they need to know because they're not going to be in the weeds wanting to right, understand no. the details yeah. of making it tough and the design and all that kind of stuff but what yeah. is it they need to know they, to to make the decisions so yeah so so one thing is if you are talking executive try to avoid games gamification you know those terminology they don't care what they really care about is outcomes and so what i tend to talk about is authentic practice so when I say to an executive, hey, we're going to, well, two things, they, they want authentic practice, like we're going to uh, uh, practice um, the verbiage around responding to a customer scenario, or we're going to practice questions, we're going to practice, that's the other thing that I find like so weird, like all my life growing up, people were like, Carl, if you want to become better at whatever, practice. And I practice. And guess what? I became better. <laughs> then we get into business and people say, practice your sales skills. Nah, I'm good. Really? You know everything about sales? Like, was it a Shazam moment or was it the <laughs> Matrix? Like, how do you know everything and you no longer need to learn? But it happens. So what I talk about is authentic practice and how authentic practice will allow people to become better. Now, there's certain things, right? You can't just have the practice. It's perfect practice makes perfect, right? So if, if you think about it, it's called deliberate practice. And so you've got to get timely critical corrective feedback as you practice something. So when I talk to executives, I talk about having that kind of timely, practical, realistic feedback. I also talk about a little bit about, because um, executives want you to think that everybody is uh, uh, problem solving. So we talk about critical thinking and problem solving through the non-linear experience. So one of the things about games that is really kind of good is that games provide you an opportunity to think in a non-linear fashion. And in fact, if you are going to be successful in business, you have to think non-linearly. You can't think, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 because something's going to, something's going to mess that up, right? It's going to be a pandemic, it's going to be a competitor, it's going to be your best person quitting, it can be whatever happens, that happens. So, so you need to think about that. The other thing I talk about is motivation. So a lot of us in the punditry talk about, you know, oh, you've got to be intrinsically motivated and, and things have to fascinate you and all that kind of stuff. But there are lots of people doing jobs that they're just doing it for a paycheck. And they're just trying to get from point A to point B. And I think quiet quitting has expanded that to a lot of different areas. And so what those people need, because they got to go to a job and they're going to go there, but it's a little bit of joy and a little bit of motivation. So I also talked to the executives about uh, how you motivate people. I, I went to, uh, did some work down in Mexico a number of years ago. And, uh, had an interview with the um, the chairman of the company called Grupo Selenes, um arrived in a helicopter 
He arrived in the helicopter. <laughs> well, I'm in this in the in the fanciest boardroom I've ever seen, like solid oak carved elements, a big uh, portrait of of the gentleman, and he spoke impeccable English. And he said, Carl, I hate the word gamification. And I'm like, oh, my God, you just flew me down here to Mexico. You just flew <laughs> in in a helicopter to tell me you hate gamification? Like, what am I doing here? And he said, but we deal with people who sometimes are not even literate. And to keep them involved and to keep them motivated, we need to use techniques that provide them the motivation to learn, the motivation to be involved, and the motivation to be engaged. And that's why I want to use gamification. So I think those two extremes, talk about authentic practice and authentic feedback is what to talk to executives about, and then talk about motivation of the people that are facing the customers on a daily basis. So that's really kind of um, what it's good to think about. Mm -hmm. And it helps. It, that's, it, that's a it's lot. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's well, fabulous but, because, you know, here it, as practitioners, we want to do things that, that improve. And so gamification can be a tool, but we don't want to talk to our, our you know, our upper level people in language that doesn't, that, you know, that's meaning, meaningless to them or even sounds trivial or silly. Oh, gamification. Well, no, we're not, we're not doing Twister. Uh, right. Part of it, you know, whatever, uh, you know, the, the reaction. So you've got to learn to speak. Depends on what you're but, teaching, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 quick uh, next time. Colors, <laughs> colors, colors, <laughs> colors. Yes, oh, oh, colors. I got you. I don't know where you guys went on that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But you, you know, we're the 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 principles that we're employing, you know, for motivation, etc. But it's the language that we use to describe it that helps somebody else understand its value and 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 get on board, you know, and 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 be supportive of the of the change. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing is, gamification is when you boil down to it, it's a, a collection of psychological and educational tools that allow us to more deeply engage learners. And if we use those tools correctly, it will work correctly. If we use those tools incorrectly, it will seem trivial. Just like, you know, you can you can attend, you know, we, 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 we bash lectures a lot, but I've been to some highly motivational, highly instructional lectures, and I'm like, that is amazing. I mean, the whole TED thing is all about lectures, right? It's, it, there's no interactivity, it's all lecture, but wow, those are life changing in some cases. So to throw away the, the you know, there's an old saying, throw away the baby with the bathwater is not a good thing, right? So lectures do have utility, but so does interactive games and gamification for learning. And if we get right down to it, I mean, that's what attracted me to it because when I started looking at what games did to get people involved and motivated, I'm like, you know what? This is just really good instructional design. like. We should own this as instructional designers. We should do this. And there was actually a movement originally, um, and many game developers. I mean, there was a there was a essay called "Gamification is BS" by a game development professor, and basically he was up making the argument like, "Hey, nobody else can develop games but us." us this this cult of game developers, <laughs> and so everybody else get out. Like, you don't know what you're doing. You're messing up. And a lot of people did mess up and a lot of people, but when it comes right down to it, looking at the techniques of how to teach others, a lot of them are, you know, for example, you know, you look at progress, right? You look at uh, the Boy Scouts have progress with badges, right? The, um, if you learn karate, you have progress with belts. If you're in a career, you have progress. If you're in school, you have pro like progress is a basic human driver Let's put progress indicators in our courses. I mean, it just makes sense. Yeah. Overcoming challenges, like why do you climb Mount Everest? Because it's there, right? That's the kind of a <laughs> dumb reason, but also like a great reason. So why do you want to learn? You know, there's all kinds of things that we can tap into to motivate people to to move forward. Um, Yukai Chow mm -hmm. wrote a whole book on um, he calls it the Oculus or Ocula or whatever, but on motivational elements and you know, if anybody's interested in that, that's a good book as well. 
Yeah, hit that up. So let's. Uh, so we hit the what didn't work, and we talked about what did work. Let's let's touch on the future. And, and again, I think you've kind of touched on all of it in in all of what you're saying. But let's maybe I know, put I'm a, finer, a, 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 a <laughs> finer point on it. No, it's good. It's good. This is the way we love it here at Idiotic. So, um, yeah. So we're we're looking to the future. Maybe somebody now is just getting interested in gamification or, or game based learning design. Uh, you know what? What should they be looking at as we go forward? Yeah, that's a great that's a great thing. So so one, I have a whole series on YouTube called the Unofficial Unauthorized History of Learning Games. Oh, so it's I look awesome at, too, I, by the way. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with that. So I so I look at learning games and then I try to apply uh, the lessons from those games. So we talk about war games, first person to develop a corporate game. Uh, I'm working on one right now on Candyland. It's not out yet, but it's going to be in there soon. My first piece of advice to 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 everyone, like I've done workshops for for years, and I actually had a workshop. One woman came into me and said, actually more than one person came into me and said, I don't like games. I'm like, okay, well you're in a game design workshop, so like, what are you doing here? And she's like, well, my boss made me come in here. I'm like, really? Uh, this is gonna be fun. Um, you're gonna be a treat. You're gonna be a treat. I can't. Would you, would you like to sit up front? Um, so the um, the real trick or real secret is to play lots of games. And the reason for that is because just like if you want to write a novel, you have to understand the literacy, right? You have to know kind of what nouns mean and how to use adjectives and, you know, sentence structure and uh, all that kind of stuff. When you create a game, you've got to know like, okay, what is shredding in terms of a card game? Okay, what does it mean to um, provide uh, um, a balanced learning environment where does uncertainty come into play so all those are a sense of literacy of games so i always tell people that you have to play games and not just games you like like if you play the same games that you like over and over and over again then you're going to create those kind of games so if the only game you've ever played is monopoly you're going to create monopoly games and you know what there's not really that good monopoly so you want to play other kind of games but not just like European board games, uh, are cooperative games are, are great. Game like Forbidden Island, the game like Catan, uh, the game like Pandemic, like all of those are really good uh, games to play. I play a game called The Grizzled, which is a World War One uh, cooperative game. So it's really kind of just play different games, but then also play um, different uh, games on your um, your phone. There's a really cool game called Rain which is really neat, uh, which is just takes um, branching, but with cards and you make it, it's just binary decision. Boom, 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 boom. It's really kind of an interesting game. So there are lots of different types of games that you should play. So if you want to get involved, get games. Second is, <laughs> today it was really funny. I saw a comment. Some, someone had just, just read um, the Gamification of Learning and Instruction book that I wrote, the, the, the white cover. And um, somebody wrote, Oh, this book is so old. Welcome to the field. And then someone else wrote timeless classic. So, you know, take it for what you want. If, if you don't like me, it's, it's really it's all old in perspective. It, it's all in perspective, but, but um, that will give you a good sense of like what it, I have a white book, a black book. I have a, so, so, the, so the white book you, is, you, you have a blue book too. I have a blue book. I have a, I have a couple of books. <laughs> Let me see if I can grab my, book here, visual aids. So this is the, the white book. So if you want to know the history and um, tenants behind gamification, this is the book. If you want to then start applying, my whole roof is coming. Out. If you want to start applying it, the black book works really well. That's um, the one that's kind of a 30,000 foot level, but it's not step by step. If you want to do step by step, I only have this book in Portuguese. I don't have the <laughs> English book. So it, it, there is I, an English version. It's called Play to Learn, but this is Portuguese. So that's me that, Play that's, to Learn in Portuguese. You're the first idiotic guest, 200 plus episodes. You're the first idiotic guest to say, I only have this book in Portuguese. <laughs> but that's a first time here. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's awesome. Make so. <laughs> So the, 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 yeah, uh, I also have a Korean version of one of my books too. It came to me one day in the mail and I'm like, I don't even know what this says. Like, no, no, <laughs> nothing. Like just, 
here it is, just this Korean book, and it was like it's the learning in 3D one, and like that. So the other thing is, if you are interested in in learning in 3D, you could read this book, but just replace virtual learning environment with metaverse, and you'd be fine. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, so if you want to get started, I suggest play games, play all kinds of games, and then really start to think about um, deconstructing those games. What made that game enjoyable? What game? What made that game not enjoyable? What did people do? Somebody wanted me to hold this back up. What did people do when they um, are not taking their turn? Is this motivational? Like all those kind of things, you want to start breaking them apart in order to find out what makes them tick. And then um, start working up your own game, like make a game. And even if nobody plays it, nobody likes it or whatever, you'll learn a lot from that process. And then the other thing is sneak them into your instructional design, you know, add them and sneak in games like that. That example I gave of having a map where things were locked and unlocked, you know, not a game, but we didn't, we did this other thing. This is a little thing, but um, think about like all the Marvel movies and there are entire YouTube channels on um, Easter eggs in Marvel movies. What Easter egg have you put in your e-learning lately? Probably none, right? But you know what? People love Easter eggs. So put a couple Easter eggs in there and make them instructional Easter eggs. You don't even have to make it an announcement. Somebody will find it. Somebody always does. And then they'll spread that information. And if it's a learning event, all the better, right? So yeah. taking some of these elements that we've, you know, uh, that we relegate to entertainment or to games and sprinkling them into what we're doing uh, just makes it more interesting. And it's not like people argue all the time, like, oh, the games are frivolous or games are a waste of time or people don't want to do that or whatever. But you don't go to work and then shut off your emotions, right? You're not an automaton. Um, soon we'll be replaced by autonomous. But until then, we bring our whole selves to work. And guess what? Our whole selves like a little entertainment. Guess what? We like a little yeah. game. Guess what? We like Easter eggs. So let's not say, oh, learning just has to be the dry facts. W what's happened with instructional design, I think in a lot of ways, is we've sucked the humanity out of it, right? So if you think about the very best way to learn is an apprenticeship situation. And sometimes the uh, person that you're serving under is really fun and great to be around. Sometimes they're mad as hell because you screwed something up, right? Sometimes they challenge you and you don't think you can do it. Like all of that is a really good way to learn. Sometimes we like it, sometimes we don't. So can you take that and integrate that in just a little way into the e-learning that you're developing, into the micro learning, into the um, classroom based learning? It doesn't have to be you know, locked in to any one place. But by by uh, doing that, you actually add humanity to people's lives, which I think is definitely worth doing. Very cool. And that is a fantastic place for us <laughs> to say we've come to the end of our time together and we should probably start playing a little song and say goodbye. And thank you though, Carl, for hanging out with us and talking gamification. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for um, having me. Carl, take a second and drop, uh, you know, contacts and all those kinds of things into the chat. Yeah, I'll so put the LinkedIn in there know where so to everybody find can you, check on that and my um, website. Oops. We would be remiss if we did not mention and remind you that uh, what we get to do here on Idiotic Instructional Designers in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino Learning Systems, the makers of Domino One. Um, I'm going to drop a little link in the chat if that's of interest to you. Check that out. Um, Carl, as always, super fab. Gang, before you leave, don't forget that um, we've got our LinkedIn group. Find us there, continue the conversation, as we say. Uh, and some also some awesome sessions coming up too, as well. So if you're here right now, check that reserve my spot button, save my seat button for uh, some of the upcoming episodes as well. And if you're gonna be uh, attending ATD in San Diego in uh, next month, uh, we'll keep giving you reminders, but I'll be doing a live from there, as we all yeah. do in a bit. So uh, put that on your calendar and make that the reason to go to ATV. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Carl. Thanks, thanks guys. Yep, thanks for having me. Anytime.